On the 29th of November 2013, around 120 people gathered at the Clutha pub on the bank of the River Clyde in Glasgow, Scotland. They were there to drink, socialise and see a popular ska band that was performing that night. Before the evening was over, however, a bizarre and inexplicable accident would claim 10 lives, almost destroy the pub, and seriously injure dozens of people. The Clutha pub, also known as the Clutha Vaults, takes its name from the original Gaelic name of the River Clyde, on the shore of which it is situated. It's a popular establishment and is known for being one of the oldest public houses in the city, as well as one of the best venues for live music. The building itself is an unusual one. It began life as a tenement, or block of flats with a shared stairwell, which was built in 1814. A few years after its construction, a license was granted to allow alcohol to be served from a pub on the ground floor. A bar of some kind has remained on site with a few short interruptions to service, almost continuously ever since. In the 1960s, a fire badly damaged the tenement, and so the upper floors were demolished, leaving only the ground floor pub remaining. It was given a new, flat roof and reopened after the fire. The fact that the building had once been much taller meant that the pub had unusually thick and sturdy walls for a single-storey building, and also that the construction of the roof was very unusual. By 2013, the Clutha was owned and operated by a local businessman. It often hosted live music and was generally a well-known and much-loved part of Glasgow's nightlife. On the night of the 29th of November, a ska band named Esperanza were due to perform. In the middle of the band's set at around 10.25pm, a loud bang was heard. Several ceiling panels fell from the ceiling, and the band abruptly stopped playing. Some people in the crowd, unsure what was happening, were heard to joke about the band bringing the roof down. A split second later, the roof collapsed completely. The inside of the pub filled with dust. Some patrons later reported hearing a loud whooshing sound, but no explosion. It quickly became apparent that not just a few ceiling tiles, but a large part of the roof of the building had caved in. Some patrons escaped injury by mere inches, while others were buried or pinned by falling debris. As shouts and screams filled the air, staff and patrons picked one another up, tended to injuries as best they could, and made their way out of the building through every available exit. One survivor, Michael Byrne, dazed but not injured, met a paramedic outside the pub and asked him what had happened. He was told that a helicopter had crashed through the roof of the pub. The situation struck Michael as so unlikely that he responded, Don't be silly, mate. Things like that don't happen. But, it emerged, this was exactly what had happened. As rescue workers, including over 100 firefighters, flooded the area, they noticed the tail rotor of a police helicopter protruding from the roof of the building. In the immediate aftermath of the crash, dozens of ambulances queued up at the site to transport around 30 injured people to nearby hospitals. Survivors and the walking wounded were directed across the street to the lobby of a nearby Holiday Inn hotel. Urban search and rescue specialists were called to the scene. The remains of the roof and the wreckage of the helicopter were stabilised, and an operation began to retrieve survivors who were buried beneath the wreckage. This operation continued for two days, eventually concluding on the 1st of December. In total, Ten people were killed in the accident. This included everyone who had been on board the helicopter. 43-year-old Police Constable Tony Collins, 36-year-old Police Constable Kirsty Nellis, and the 51-year-old pilot Captain David Trail. Seven patrons of the Clutha were also killed. 48-year-old Gary Arthur, 59-year-old Joe Cusker, 33-year-old Colin Gibson, 61-year-old Robert Jenkins, 58-year-old John McGarrigal, 56-year-old Samuel McGee, 
and 44-year-old Mark O'Prey. A long investigation ensued to try and determine the cause of the crash. The helicopter was a Eurocopter EC-135, a type of helicopter used by several police forces in the UK. It had taken off that night from Glasgow City Heliport to investigate from the air reports of a person trespassing on railway lines. It was returning to base when it crashed, seemingly with very little warning, into the Clutha pub. Some witnesses reported hearing the helicopter flying alarmingly low overhead just before the impact, and a sound that might be characterised as the aircraft's engines misfiring. Further investigation by the Air Accident Investigation Branch discovered that, just before it crashed, the helicopter's engines had failed or flamed out due to a lack of fuel. At the same time, however, there was plenty of fuel in the main tank of the aircraft. All that would have been necessary to prevent the accident was for the pilot to flick a single switch to turn on a fuel transfer pump and move fuel from the main tank to the smaller tanks which supplied the engines. Indeed, it appeared that the pilot had acknowledged more than one low-fuel warning shortly before the crash. Pilots were trained to switch on fuel pumps immediately following a low-fuel warning, or to land within 10 minutes. On this occasion, the pilot, David Trail, had done neither of these things. Mr. Trail was a very experienced and capable pilot. He had been flying helicopters for more than 20 years and had worked with the Royal Air Force and the police. He had also worked as an instructor for less experienced pilots. He had been in good health and the aircraft had been in good condition. Why, then, had he not either landed after receiving the low fuel warning or simply switched on a fuel transfer pump? Because there was no cockpit voice recorder fitted to the aircraft, it was impossible to determine for certain what had happened. But it was noted that the fuel level indicators in the helicopter gave incorrect impressions of the amount of fuel remaining. This would have given Mr. Trail reason to question the low fuel warnings, and delay switching on the fuel transfer pumps. Because he had incorrectly trusted the fuel level indicators over the low fuel warning, Mr. Trail was found to have caused the crash. However, in the aftermath of the disaster, modifications were made to many similar helicopters to ensure that the fuel level indicators did not present confusing information to the pilot. Many people who knew Mr. Trail have argued that if the fuel level indicators could confuse even a pilot as proficient and experienced as him, it is the misleading indicators that should be considered the cause of the crash and not the pilot's response to them. At the time of the crash, cockpit voice recorders and flight data recorders were not fitted on all police helicopters in use in the UK. Following the crash, the use of recorders was made mandatory, ensuring that should another police helicopter crash in the future, more information about the moments before the accident will be preserved. The owner of the Clutha, after consulting the local community, determined that the pub would reopen when possible. In the interim, he was inundated with support. The beer manufacturer tenants offered to pay the wages of his staff until he was able to reopen. Many local tradespeople offered their services to rebuild and refurnish the venue. When the pub did reopen two years after the crash, it did so with a very different layout. An area that had previously been a beer garden was now enclosed, which allowed for the area worst affected by the crash to remain unused. On the day of the pub's reopening, it was visited by Nicola Sturgeon, the then First Minister of Scotland, who had regularly visited the Clutha when she was a student. In 2014, Bond Air Services, the company responsible for operating the helicopter that crashed, accepted liability for the accident and began to pay compensation to survivors and the families of victims. Public fundraisers collected around half a million pounds to support those who had been injured in the crash, with the amount bolstered by several charitable concerts by high-profile bands. Separately, the owner of the Clutha also started the Clutha Trust, 
to help disadvantaged young people find a career in the arts. Today, the Kluthe is a thriving and successful public house once more. The crash on the 29th of November 2013 is a tragic part of the establishment's long history. While nothing can undo the hurt and trauma of the crash, the work of hundreds of people has ensured, at least, that a beloved local landmark was not also lost.